The good news is I found out that breaker works. Ah. All right, for real, that was a joke, but I'm gonna do this video and go over the ease stop and other safeties that I have in this machine just to, to keep me from, uh, from potentially killing myself. So inside the box itself, these are the old notes for what is what. And down here, I've got my little shorthand for the terminal blocks. So if we come down here, got the terminal blocks color-coded, so I know just by looking at them, what exactly they are. Now that's just a, a, a little extra safety thing um, just to keep you from, from plugging something in that shouldn't go in that terminal block. Um, the other thing is, and not everybody's going to have this, but a labeler. I have this, so I'm going to use it. And I've already started, like down here on the I.O. terminal block, I have what is the I.O. and you know, some of them fell out, but just started to label. So I'm cleaning up this wire mess because this is all to the servo drivers, which I have yet to get to as far as wiring them up. I'm a little, little uh, cautious when it comes to that because those are probably the most expensive thing inside this cabinet. <clears throat> but cleaning it up, that way you don't have loose wires like this just floating around because, you know, you're working on it. But Hey, if one of these loose wires comes in here and hits my Maso card, I'm screwed. Um, not because necessarily it would be dangerous, uh, but it will probably kill the Maso card. I'd be surprised if it would survive uh, being ground or shorted or, or something like that. So be very careful when it comes to just loose wires. I kind of... I've zip tied the uh, the wires. I have no no leads or connections going to the ones that are loose. I've zip tied them together. That way, they're not all over the place. Just to keep them up out of the way. That way, while you are working on it and you want to start up the machine, you can do so safely without killing yourself or killing something inside this machine. So, yeah, and it's nothing to play with. This does, this machine originally ran 440. You can see it up in there. It doesn't anymore, or in this cabinet it won't, because um, I don't like 440. Higher the voltage, the more, uh, the, the higher the possibility would arc, even though <clears throat> 440 is generally considered safe. It's not something you normally find inside of a house. And the only way that they actually had 440 in this was it was three phase going in and one of those legs went to a transformer and the transformer stepped it up to 440. So, <clears throat> and then it got split up to other 220, 208 lines that would go through the, uh, the whole box and it would power all the, uh, the external peripherals and everything <clears throat> so all right I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what this machine is like with the e-stop and how I kind of configured it so it's it's safer and it does give not only a, a disconnect to the Maso card so the Maso card says okay stop everything but a physical disconnect with these contactors small note you're not supposed to use a contactor on this particular VFD just to shut it on and off. So I'm going to take the, the uh, lines coming from the VFD, not the lines coming to it, but the lines coming from it after, after it's been inverted. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to take it down to this and then I've got the, uh, the spindle plugs. And that's how I'm going to set that one up. So. Yeah, um, other note, always, always, always get a breaker fuse. This one was like 10 bucks, I think, off Allied Electronics. Um, and the two vendors I use is Allied Electronics and Automation Direct. They both seem to have quite a variety of it. Got the fan hooked up. That runs down to this relay here. Comes down, you see I've got those labeled. 
<clears throat> and that will take the heat off these guys and I am planning on putting a fan right there by the cart. So, all right, I think that's just about it. I'm gonna take some time and turn on this machine and, and show you how the e-stop works. All right, so I'm at the controller itself. If I just click the, uh, the e-stop and power on button for the machine, it's not gonna do anything. If I go here and you can hear the relay inside the machine flipping over. So now it's not flashing, but, and it's instantaneous. There's almost no delay on that. So it's just a way to keep everything safer. That way you've got a physical disconnect, which is what you should have on top of the, uh, the Maso card. So, and then if I turn it on and shut it off, it reads it, of course, because it's going through the Maso card. The power coming in, right now I'll only have 110 coming in, but this is three pulls, so I can, I can hook up, you know, 220 coming in here as well. And just to note that this is indeed the big switch on the back, and this is, if you, I was to orient this around, this would become live, and there is a little off button right back there that tells me for sure it's off. Also, good grounding is a thing, uh, because if you don't have good grounding, you can actually get what's called two grounds, where it's not quite the same value. So, and that can do some really weird electrical stuff. Uh, so stay away from that as much as possible. Just connect it every now and then, if you have it running in a line, connect it back to this. As, you know, every now and then, just to just to make sure that it's not changing in value or anything. Last little thing is lockout takeout, just because if you're working on this and someone else walks up and opens up the cabinet for whatever reason, and uh, it can be bad, that and it stops it from turning on at all. So you cannot physically open this. This is connected to that rod back there, and it. It locks itself in place. So it's just a little safety feature that it's built in. This pulls out, so you can actually go in there and pull this out. It usually sits flush with the uh, the red part of this. All right, so that's all I got for this one. So as always, thanks for watching.